but I remember kind of the first time crying was when I walked into the funeral home. Um, my stepdad and I were the first to kind of go in together. And um, when I saw my sister's bodies in the casket, they were buried together um, side by side and kind of their, um, you know, they had little Winnie the Pooh band-aids on their head. And that was the moment that I just started sobbing. And Turns out that the, my, my sisters were dropped off at my mom's apartment, but she didn't tell them, tell Chris, my stepfather, that I wasn't there. Um, and her and her boyfriend at the time decided to go to a party, a work party for his work. They left the party completely, completely uh, inebriated. Todd had four times the legal limit uh, blood alcohol in his system. Um, nobody was buckled. My sisters were in the back seat of a car, uh, it's old, Oldsmobile, and they turned um, onto Highway um, 218 going north in the southbound lane. Um, so going the wrong direction on a highway for a few miles before they hit another vehicle head on at roughly 70 miles an hour. <laughs> There was a man who kind of saw them pull onto the road going the wrong way and tried to stop them, or at least flash his lights and um, couldn't get their attention. His name's Josh, and he, when he couldn't get their attention in the days of no cell phones, he pulled off and called 911, got back on the interstate, and came up on the accident. He was the last to see them alive and one of the first to see them dead. Everyone in my mom's car died and one man in the other vehicle that um, they hit died. Every year I have this crash box that I, I call it the crash box. It's got all these articles and mementos from um, the accident that one of my aunts had saved um, and she gave it to me and the summer of 2017, so it would have been 18 years after the accident, um, I did the same routine. I kind of pulled it down, started going through the articles, and I've read these articles you know, so many times, but for some reason this time, um, the three names that of, of people that were involved in the, in the crash and were affected by it too kept popping up, and it was um, Carla, the widow of the man who died in the other vehicle, um, Steve, the, the state trooper who investigated the accident, and then um, Josh, who I call the Good Samaritan, but he was the man who drove alongside trying to get them to turn around. And I came upstairs and it was at, you know, late at night and I just started searching. Um, within a week, I think I found all three of them. Um, and, and I just decided to, to message them um, on a whim. I just felt like I needed to say sorry or at least thank you to some of them um, for what they tried to do and um, sorry to Carla for, for what my mom had caused. I don't want to be known for the bad that has happened or to really paint my mom or people in a bad light because we all we're all good you know everybody is good it's just we make choices that maybe aren't the best or we struggle and we don't know how to heal or things like that but I just don't I don't want people to think negatively about um, my mom or me or my past or anything like that so um, I think it's always hard to share because it's a very weighty and heavy thing to share with someone, but I know every time I've done it, a, a burden has been released in saying someone else is now carrying this and they feel, they feel it too, and I don't have to carry it myself. So, and now that I've reconnected with the other people, I feel like that was the missing piece that I didn't know I was still holding on to, kind of this sadness or this grief that I, my, my family caused something that hurt someone else. Um, 
I didn't realize that reaching out to them would almost be the final healing step.